Welcome to a special edition of WorkSpan TV. I'm Marsha Rhodes, and with me today is Mr. Artie Navin, President of Strategic Development Worldwide, a California-based consulting firm. Artie spent a majority of his career as Chief Human Resources Officer for Steve Wynn's gaming companies. Welcome, Artie. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, it's my pleasure. Artie, so many of our members are interested in learning how to take their HR careers to the next level. Okay. So we'd like to spend a few minutes talking about that. Sure. Why don't we start with you briefly telling us about your career path, how you got started to where you are today. Well, I actually went to school for human resources. I went to Cornell's Industrial and Labor Relations School in the 1960s. And when I graduated, I went to work for a family steel business for a dozen years and then was recruited by Steve Wynn when he was starting his company in Atlantic City. And what did working for Steve Wynn teach you about business that you were able to use as head of HR? Two things. One, you have to pay attention to the smallest of details. And if you get all of those right, you might be successful. And secondly, always be focused on your customer, who for me were the employees. Now, Steve Wynn said that his company was successful not because HR was a department, but it was the department. How did he come to that realization, and did you have a hand in that? No, I did not. He had it when I got there. He was always very focused on employees. He often said that if you want to know how to run your business, ask your employees and they'll tell you. And secondly, he knew that happy employees made happy guests, and that created profit. Now tell us about the Mrs. Doubtfire story you were telling us earlier in the hallway. Well, when I opened Wynn Resorts, it was the first time that a major opening like that had an online application. And I wanted to make it very simple. And I jokingly said, we'll create an application that even a grandmother could fill out. And that became kind of the way we referred to it. And everybody laughed about that. And as we got ready to open, we needed to do a video for the new hire orientation. And we needed a character. And they said, well, how about uh, that grandmother you were referring Mrs. to? Doubtfire. And we got uh, makeup artist who had worked on the Mrs. Doubtfire show. And uh, they came and they made me to look like uh, a 65-year-old grandmother who my mother didn't even recognize when I actually bumped into her all made up. And uh, we did the videos for the orientation. And then we did a series of videos on policies and procedures, things your mother or grandmother would tell you to do or not to do. And it became very clever and very cute. And after 25 years working in that company, that's what I'm remembered for. Artie, you were once referred to as the top HR guy in America. How did that accolade come about? Well, there were a couple of things. Uh, and it was the Award for Professional Excellent, Excellence from the uh, Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM. And it had to do with a program that I started for ex-cons. It started with gang members uh, when we inadvertently found out that we had gang members working in our kitchens and there were bloods and crips and how they had not gotten along out on the streets but in the workplace where they didn't know they got along because they didn't know their backgrounds. And then when they learned that they were gang members, it was one of those big aha moments. So they. The, the Metropolitan Police in, in Las Vegas came to talk to us and we did a community program that helped gang members to understand their differences and their similarities and to build respect among them as people, not as gang members. And it was a, a big thing for Las Vegas at that time. And that led us to thinking about how do you give people a second chance? And we uh, helped fund a program run by the California or the Nevada Corrections Department. It was a, a boot camp for first time nonviolent felony offenders. And we hired almost all of their graduates. I mean, people would go for six months in a real boot camp environment. And it was designed to scare these first time offenders into being straight. But the trick was to give them an opportunity when they got out of prison so that they could earn a living because if they couldn't earn a living, they only had a couple of things they could do, most of which would get them back in jail. And we hired over 100 of these uh, ex-cons, and it became a great program. Uh, you've probably seen this guy on TV. Uh, he's been on Oprah many times. He was a cook at Bellagio, and he became one of the executive chefs. And he wrote a book uh, from Coke to Cooking. 
and uh, he was a Coke dealer. And we had hired all of these people and given them a second chance, and almost all of them made the best of it and were very successful. And it was one of those aha moments for me as an HR guy for our company, and it became very successful for us. And I was rewarded for that with this award. Artie, what are some of the HR policies that you personally violated? There has to be a couple. Well, you know, you got to be careful that you don't implement stupid policies, <laughs> and there are a lot of those in the workplace. Um, no visible tattoos or piercings. Um, I have several tattoos, and uh, I don't see anything wrong with them, and I don't think that the customers see anything wrong with tattoos anymore, and that's where those policies came from. But I always had a lot of tattoos, and I like them. And, I remember when my kid first said to me she wanted to get a tattoo, I was conflicted because I couldn't say no. So I had to go with her when she got her first tattoo. And uh, I had a ponytail for many, many years, and we had this policy that men couldn't have hair over the collars of their shirts. And uh, employees always used to look at me, and whether it was facial hair or long hair, uh, I'm not sure that those policies are quite as important as some people think they are.